and now we will move on to the uh, next presentation uh, on which is on challenges and opportunities for black pepper amidst the global pandemic of coronavirus and this is by uh, Girizar Rao. Girizar Rao is a postgraduate um, uh, from uh, in management from Indian Institute of uh, Rural Management. Uh, Anand Irma. Uh, I'm also from the same institute but a few years junior to him. Uh, he's a global director of uh, Griffith Sustainably Sourced and the director of purchasing at Griffith India. He has more than 29 years of experience in sourcing agricultural commodities such as spices and is responsible for the vertical integration of the Griffith supply chain. Now, I would like to request Mr. Gizdar Rao uh, to make his presentation. Uh, Giri, you can start. Thank you, Nipu. Uh, let me begin by thanking uh, IPC and uh, Lian for uh, having me uh, to be part of this panel here. And uh, thanks, uh, Ravi, for the uh, nice uh, uh, energizing presentation from you. Good to know uh, all the innovative things you are doing at OLAM and uh, some of the things uh, that you are doing is uh, covered in my presentation. And I hope that, uh, you know, uh, it makes sense uh, that uh, what you are doing fits into uh, the overall scheme of things that I will be discussing. So let me begin uh, uh, by sharing the structure of uh, what I'm going to present. We start with an overall, um, uh, sorry, an overview of the pepper industry. It's always good to halt and take stock of uh, where we are, what we have achieved in the last, say, two to three years. And then uh, a overview of uh, the impact of the pandemic uh, on the food industry and uh, the challenges uh, for the pepper industry uh, arising out of that. Then opportunities for uh, breaking growth, stagnation. Uh, then uh, working under new normal, again, an opportunity. And uh, some uh, practical suggestions uh, on how to cash in uh, on these opportunities uh, from uh, our side and uh, uh, what uh, each of the stakeholders can do uh, to support this so and i would be summarizing uh, the entire presentation in the last slide so now with this uh, introduction uh, let us go ahead with that like i said uh, we should uh, pause and take stock of what we have been doing uh, in the last few years if you look at uh, the growth of uh, pepper uh, in terms of international uh, trade quantity wise uh, we have been uh, making good progress uh, the uh, quantity of uh, pepper that is consumed or that is exported is increasing uh, year by year uh, so far as whole pepper is concerned. However, in the case of uh, ground and uh, cracked pepper, which we call as the uh, value added uh, pepper, there has been uh, some stagnation, some of it contributed uh, by the pandemic, mainly in this year, uh, because you know the months of uh, March, April, May are very important for the uh, you know, cracked and ground pepper industry. And this was the time when most of the factories were badly affected. So that contributed uh, to some of these um, issues in uh, not being able to uh, gain on the volumes. And uh, also there has been some shift in the consumption pattern uh, by the, uh, you know, various consuming centers uh, because of the uh, pandemic so that has contributed and again the low prices of pepper also uh, should have uh, actually uh, provided a boost like it has done for the whole pepper uh, however in terms of um, uh, uh, value uh, the realization from pepper trade has continued to slide uh, after hitting a peak of over 2500 million us dollars in 200 and 2015 uh, with the realization continued to slide and we have seen that happening uh, in 2020 as well. Uh, this was more marked in whole pepper and nothing to do with the pandemic as such, but this mainly due to the uh, supply demand imbalances and uh, the prevailing low prices of pepper. Uh, I just uh, uh, moved back about three years when I made the presentation to IPC in Kandy in uh, uh, 
2017 just did a comparison of uh, on the you know various key countries who are importing and i find that there's much change uh, uh in the uh, key importers uh like you see usa uk saudi arabia are main uh, you know uh, top 3 or 4 importers are the same so far as cracked ground pepper are concerned all pepper also similar however uh, we see that some of the producing countries are also becoming important importers india vietnam china and of course nepal also you know uh, importing more for re-exports uh, so this is a little bit of change in the pattern however by and large you don't see uh, much change in who is actually uh, consuming or who is importing pepper and then uh, perhaps uh, reselling it so uh, the uh, imports by the uh, growing countries could create some issues on authenticity of the origins uh, wherever the consumer is particular that he gets from a certain origin so that is something to uh, watch out for all your is in uh, pepper uh, a key uh, segment of the industry uh, we see a marginal drop uh, in the uh, exports of um, uh, all your is in during 2020 and uh, by by and large if you look at the last 3 uh, years there has been a stagnation uh, in this you know um, consumption of uh, all your is in uh, pepper and uh, last uh, year we saw that um, uh, de- there was good demand for the light berries from vietnam and indonesia and uh, which uh, led to a decline in the imports of light berries from uh, sri lanka and india continued to be a major exporter followed by sri lanka but uh, an important point to note is sri lanka's share is increasing uh, my estimate or based on the data is that almost 40% share uh, of the all your resin black pepper has been captured by sri lanka and the indian uh, the, the industry continued to churn out uh, regular stuff the basic all your resin solvent extracted all your resin 4020 you know uh, so uh, there's nothing new or uh, nothing exciting happened uh, that happened in the industry in the last 3 years and uh, they could have the industry could have lost a big opportunity if you compare with the other uh, you know industries which cashed in during uh, due to the pandemic for example the uh, the botanicals uh, you know the elderberries and the uh, you know the, the mountain tea and those kind of stuff which were in higher demand the turmeric extracts the curcumin uh, which again uh, was sought after uh, uh, as a a cure or as a prevention uh, for the uh, pandemic those kind of uh, you know uh, uh, boost was not seen in the uh, pepper uh, oleo resin industry so i feel that uh, they could have uh, missed uh, uh, on this opportunity during the year uh, so net realization like i said uh, even if you look at it on a per kilo basis all the three categories uh, declined is not surprising uh, because we all know the prices are lower uh, and again the product mix in terms of value addition again not nothing really to cheer about it's remaining 73 to 72% continues to be a whole pepper that is being uh, exported out from the growing regions and uh, all your resin gained uh, some market share however uh, given the low base uh, of all your resin this is really not big in terms of real value i just also did some comparison uh, uh, with the consumption of pepper uh, say in the last 8 uh, years compared to some of the other commodities uh, or, uh, or the other uh, uh, products of uh, food Uh, which uh, indirectly affects the consumption of pepper for example uh, look at the potatoes uh, we see that the you know the compounded annual growth rate of potatoes has been uh, 0.09 based on the uh, production figures and uh, you can also see uh, all the others uh, are, are not uh, much more than uh, 0.4% whereas pepper has shown an amazing 
growth of uh, 1.79 percent, uh, you know, uh, derived from the uh, higher uh, output of pepper. And the chili, uh, another spice, has also shown uh, a, a very good growth of uh, nearly uh, one percent per annum. Uh, other than that, all the other so these uh, other commodities have shown very marginal, very s- slow growth. So based on this, um, you know, we can conclude that pepper has grown faster than other complementary food products. Uh, so people are consuming the more spicy food across the world. Again, uh, that's a reason why chili also uh, you see very high growth. Uh, so this growth probably is due to more travel and ethnic influence on the world population. Uh, in the last decade and uh, more creative approaches required to boost further growth uh, by the spice industry and pepper industry in particular. And uh, by and large, we can say, uh, based on our uh, analysis of the trade numbers, that nothing much has changed in the industry over the last three years. Uh, the industry, uh, all of us uh, being part of it, uh, has been have been uh, really reactive to price movements and customer needs. Higher share of spices in the uh, food basket is something heartening, and limited effort on new applications or new customer categories development. And uh, the the pandemic threw in its own challenges and opportunities, which we will cover uh, in the next slides. And uh, concern has been on realization of pepper. If you look at this uh, chart here, you see that uh, chili has been steadily uh, growing in terms of uh, value uh, in, t- in the international trade. However, pepper uh, has been declining. So chili has really overtaken and it is maintaining a heavy, a steady growth uh, as compared to uh, pepper. So this is something the pepper industry needs to look at see how this can be addressed in terms of uh, the uh, you know the uh, customer mix or the uh, the consumption of uh, pepper and its product uh, we don't see much change uh, there has been uh, short term uh, changes uh, due to the pandemic uh, like the you know we found that most of the uh, restaurants uh, uh, and uh, packaged food or the processed food, sorry, uh, the demand uh, dropped uh, steeply during the initial months of the pandemic. However, there were major gains the, at the retail uh, retail segment uh, to compensate for that. So overall, uh, uh, while there was a major shift, it affected some of the players in the consuming countries who uh, import pepper and other spices. However, the industry as such, uh, the pepper industry or the spice industry, by and large, uh, has been insulated from these uh, uh, fluctuations in demand. And we also uh, see uh, that um, these have been these are all short-term uh, changes, and uh, by and large, the uh, the consumption pattern uh, for uh, uh, pepper uh, has remained uh, uh, constant over the last three to five years. So uh, this is um, some takeaways from our understanding. So one of coming back to the key purpose of today's uh, uh, presentation that I am making is to see how uh, the uh, pandemic has affected the industry. So our understanding is that initial uh, period of the pandemic, that is March to say April, May, first two to three months uh, when the pandemic really spread uh, was a really challenging period for everyone. Uh, so this uh, key challenges like you know availability of labor for agriculture, as well as for manufacturing and disruption to transportation due to lockdown, closures of major ports, and the need uh, for uh, most uh, plants to shut down uh, because of the regulations of the local governments and drop in consumption due to shifting eating habits that I mentioned and also uh, inability to meet customers and uh, you know all the trade uh, 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 conventions were all cancelled all this had uh, some impact in the initial uh, day so that is what we call as challenges which are short-term disruptions faced by the industry 
and uh, then there was a recovery phase uh, which was which happened because of all the steps taken by the various governments in lifting the lockdowns and trying to bring business back to normal and then what we will see in future are opportunities and uh, so dwelling a little bit more on the initial challenges uh, the industry was focusing on uh, maintaining the flow of food and commodities throughout the supply chain uh, with the contribution of all the stakeholders the pandemic was again of a global scale you know which the nobody had actually encountered this kind of a a situation earlier so that made uh, matters worse it was difficult to shift and buy from uh, some other origin because they also faced the same issues imbalance in global trade leading to difficulties in uh, ocean freights lockdowns closing of outlets supermarkets eating houses etc created an initial uh, disruption in the demand pattern piling of stocks with farmers or immediate or intermediate uh, segments and rumors of spreading of virus from foot to foot contact also had to be dealt with uh, in the early days of the pandemic and uh, food companies uh, also had the concern and had the requirement to preserve the employees health and uh, they, there was uh, difficulty in getting sufficient workforce to come and uh, work in the factories and of course uh, the frequent changes to local and international regulations and rules because the government themselves were grappling with this problem uh, which was uh, unprecedented however despite uh, all these uh, uh, disruptions uh, or the short term challenges the food chain uh, the food supply chain remains strong since many supply chain actors including farmers producer distributors and retailers have worked hard to you know bring things back to normal uh, after the initial shock so the period of march june was one where uh, there was a lot of difficulties for the industry however uh, the industry was able to recoup and come back uh, and hit back at the issue then there was the recovery phase the government and agencies developing better understanding of the virus lifting or dilution of lockdown in most countries resumption of domestic international travel in phased manner development and fast track approval of the vaccines which is now uh, uh, you know being rolled out in some of the countries and is likely to spread spread out to many more countries and uh, more and more countries are going to be benefited by this so due to these developments some of the original assumptions of march june uh, were no more valid and many of the challenges that were initially uh, encountered are slowly fading away and there is going to be some permanent uh, effect though of the pandemic although the initial impact has been uh, overcome we would now like to look at what are some of the uh, effects of the pandemic that would remain and continue to be a significant factor and uh, so some of these uh, i have uh, summarized as opportunities so one of the key things uh, we we see that consumers want to eat healthy there has been a lot of uh, awareness and a lot of uh, demand for uh, healthy food and mainly the uh, to protect themselves uh, and their immune systems concern on food safety to prevent the spread of diseases has again grown rapidly as a result of the pandemic greater belief in uh, traditional uh, streams of medicine like ayurveda uh, has also uh, been a big uh, uh, influence uh, of the pandemic move towards vegetarianism and greater demand for alternate proteins uh, because people believe that uh, the contact with animals is what is uh, uh, what had given rise to the uh, you know the pandemic so they wanted to avoid this and uh, there has been a lot of movement towards being vegetarian as well as uh, look at alternate means of protein higher demand for tea infusion and uh, decoctions uh, as a prevention or as a remedy for the virus has also been seen and it is likely to remain for a longer time securing long term food supplies uh, you know has been a major concern so now uh, most uh, consumers or most uh, companies that uh, 
depend on uh, uh, origins which are far away are trying to look at the securing supplies by having alternate sources as well as uh, looking at uh, substitute products so that is again something which is going to stick on for a longer time consumers and processors want to ensure that they work with sustainable sources a lot of like ravi also spoke about it but now there is it is much easier uh, to uh, you know uh, make uh, consumers understand the need for sustainable uh, practices and uh, working with sustainable sources and customers uh, demand uh, uh, also enhance product shelf life you know because uh, it took longer to deliver products and products were also held on the uh, you know in the warehouses and in the uh, retail shelves so there has been a big demand for increasing the product shelf life uh, so that is another thing that is going to stay for some more time and move a uh, movement towards uh, going natural less synthetic leading to higher demand for clean label products and belief in uh, need to preserve natural resources and clean environment for the future generation and also somehow got a boost because of the trouble everybody went through during the last 7 to 8 months and the concern on exposing humans to diseases so which means that there has been a big uh, boost to the automation and uh, uh, the innovation industry and of course resource optimization people have realized the importance of reducing wastes and uh, making uh, better use of resources to reuse uh, uh, and all these uh, uh, became very important and there has becoming uh, is becoming more uh, popular so this uh, i see as the opportunity for us uh, in this industry uh, to cash in on see how we can cater to these uh, changes how we can cater to these changing demands and uh, try and see uh, if uh, we can use this to break the uh, stagnation or to do better uh, in the coming uh, years so i just try to summarize that so this uh, in order to cash in on these uh, opportunities uh, you know uh, we may have to uh, change uh, on how we act and uh, and what should be our focus areas for example how we grow how we manufacture how we package and how we deliver and our key focus area should be on technology as we have seen that you know a lot of uh, changes uh, are being demanded and uh, they want to you know everybody is talking about uh, reducing exposure of humans uh, so there, there has been a big uh, boost to uh, infusing uh, technology so uh, a key focus area should be technology we already talked about sustainability food safety has become again a be a key uh, area which uh, more and more consumers are demanding authenticity traceability supply chain management again as be uh, has been in greater focus research and innovation uh, in all areas in how we grow how we manufacture how we package and how we deliver and uh, optimize the use of natural resources as other key thing which uh, i think uh, we as an industry are not good at is on information and communication especially to the consumers and to our farmers and everybody so that also is uh, has to be a key focus area for us to collectively cash in uh, on these uh, changes so i will uh, i'll try to put uh, you know uh, on some of the key Uh, specific uh, activities uh, that can be looked at this is this by no means uh, they are exhaustive uh, under each of the uh, focus areas and uh, uh, how we grow that is agriculture how we manufacture how we package and how sorry, we manage this yeah um, sorry to interrupt um, can we move a little bit faster because time is running out right so, so uh, these are uh, anyway available on the uh, can share this so i'll skip this uh, and uh, uh, go straight away to the uh, all right uh, I, i think this also nothing really uh, much to talk about you know the everybody all these stakeholders have a key role to play farmers and organizers uh, exporters the agencies uh, asta we have a representation from asta and ipc here also have to play key roles and importers and regulators 
uh, and uh, everybody has to contribute uh, in their respective ways in order to uh, you know uh, cash in on the opportunities so uh, just to summarize um, uh, although the paper industry has seen good growth in the last 8 years uh, it has happened mainly due to change in consumers preference towards spicy food uh, and the pandemic uh, post immediate challenges to the industry which was handled effectively after the initial shock and uh, following the uh, recovery phase uh, mainly uh, by government initiatives many of the initial crises disappeared the pandemic however brought in some changes among consumers and brands that were there to stay catering to these changes poses immense opportunities for the pepper industry and uh, we talked about how uh, we can some of the practical ways of how we can cash in on this and uh, all the stakeholders involved need to participate and change the way they have been working so far in order to uh, make this happen so with this i will stop nipo over yes, to you uh, okay giri um thank you very much uh the depth uh, to which you have gone to do analysis about the various factors affecting the community and the pepper uh, is remarkable giri that is very evident from your presentation thank you very much for doing uh, all this research on behalf of everyone and it's um, heartening to know that the pepper is growing faster than all the other commodities and even within spices uh, pepper is the uh, leader in terms of growth also very good and we also we always had a concern um, until you just made it very clear Uh, whether the pepper consumption or um, you know how uh, whether it was badly affected the, by the global pandemic uh, but uh, now good to hear that uh, the challenges were handled pretty well and um, the things are looking up for the industry and um, thank you very much girida uh, once again and um, let's see um, some of the questions that are popping up um, <clears throat> we have a question from uh, mr uh, samfo hing of wwf cambodia Uh, how do you measure sustainability is that something uh, that we can take up now <clears throat> sorry is that something we can take up now uh, how do you measure sustainability yeah so we we cannot really measure uh, sustainability uh, because the sustainability is uh, uh, much much uh, bigger and wider uh, it just cannot be measured as such however sustainability like i think even in ravi's presentation this question was there sustainability is is uh, how we see it is uh, basically to make sure that uh, uh, whatever we do uh, in our uh, activities uh, is not having any adverse impact on the following generations uh, so we uh, leave the earth as it is you know so that's how we look at sustainability and uh, uh there there cannot be a measure you know because uh, uh sustainability is, uh, is something uh, we also link it very closely to continuous improvement so if we measure then we say that we have achieved it so there is some nothing there is no target that has to be achieved it is always something of uh, to do with continuous improvement we keep on uh, bettering uh, what we do so that's how uh, uh, our path uh, towards sustainability has to be Okay, we have another question from uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sebastian. He is asking: See, the uh, you have shown the prices of uh, pepper moving uh, down and chili catching up. Uh, is there a cannibalism here? Will uh, consumers of uh, <coughs> chilies, um, you know, move more and more into pepper and uh, leading to a pepper, uh, you know, surge in consumption? Yeah, uh, there could be. uh because um, you know whenever uh, uh the prices of one commodity uh shoots up and uh, uh, there is another commodity available at a lower price there has there would be uh some uh, you know cannibalism uh, but again uh, the, you know i i don't think that is significant uh because uh, being in the food industry i can tell you uh, it is very difficult for me to just change uh, make uh, you know our uh, Uh, R&D team to change uh, from uh, say Vietnamese pepper to Brazilian pepper that takes two years for you know uh, for us to actually yes. approve such a change. So let alone uh, changing from pepper to chili, but there has to there could be uh, you know a small amount of cannibalism. 
Okay, all right, great. Uh, now uh, there's a question from Tijo, and uh, he asked, um, "When do you see the next uh, spike in pepper prices? Is this going to come in the next couple of years' time?" I think that will be answered in the next uh, presentation when all we right, talk yes. about the markets and the crops uh, crop situation. Okay, all right. I think you know uh, we'll uh, not take any more questions at this stage because uh, we are running a little bit. Um, uh, delayed. Um, now, um, if it's okay, I will move on. Sorry, sorry. I, can I have a one more question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, thank you. So, I want to know, uh, you have mentioned uh, about the uh, COVID and then you have done very excellent studies and you are set to the cyber of the challenging time and also the recovery and also the, 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 uh, the way uh, forward. <laughs> So, what is what will be the new impact of the new strain of COVID? Uh, do you have a, a comment on that? Uh, I am not an expert on uh, on the new strains of uh, COVID, but what we see is that yes, the government is showing a lot of concern, not only in most many countries uh, on the new strains, uh, and I think uh, it will have an impact uh, because. Uh, you know, this will fuel more, uh, some more lockdowns. We, we were expecting that the industry, uh, I mean, the, the world will uh, open up uh, uh, earlier, but there could be some delays because of the new strains. We are seeing new strains coming from uh, UK, coming from South Africa, and uh, who knows, it can be, there could be some more. So uh, yes, so that is an area of concern and we need to be more cautious because of this. Uh, thanks, Giri. I think we have uh, um, a scientist from uh, ICAR, Mr. Dr. Anke Gauda, uh, wishing to ask a question. Um, so I would uh, uh, let him ask the question directly to you. Um, doctor, if you can hear me, um, you can talk now. Uh, Dr. Anke Gauda, your microphone is muted. Okay. Uh, no, this COVID situation, anywhere spices are uh, doing well. So the production aspects are also increased. Yes. Uh, that, what, that is what even I have uh, said in the presentation. Yes. The volume wise, you know, the, uh, the consumption or the, or the uh, trade has really increased uh, in pepper. However, uh, the uh, Value-wise, it has come down, and that has got nothing to do with pandemic. That's what I mentioned in the presentation. Yeah. Okay. I hope uh, this is what you are looking. For. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Please download the IPC Farmers app for your country from the Google Play Store or from the App Store for more training videos, guidance on cultivation, daily price information, marketing support exchanging ideas with other farmers and for online help from an expert. Search for IPC Farmers app.